Hello, you have reached the call center. Please hold while you are connected to the next available agent. And sure enough, we have an incoming call here and we have an incoming call here. The call has ended here and we can hear some echo. And this call here. Thank you for calling. Please dial back for more assistance. And there we go. Hey everyone, Oren from Telnix here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to build a call center application using the Telnix Voice API and a sample app that we've made available on GitHub. So let's jump right in. All right, so we have just a couple of prerequisites that you'll need to set up on your end before you can get this call center application running. So I already have a Telnix account you can see here that I'm signed into my mission control portal. If you don't have an account, go to telnix.com and hit sign up. You'll get $10 of free testing credit. Should be more than enough to test this application and then some. I also have Ngrok downloaded and installed. Ngrok is our tunneling tool. So what that does is it exposes a locally running application to the internet. Because our call center application is gonna be running locally on my machine, we need a way for it to send and receive webhooks to and from the Telnix application that I'm going to set up and that's what Ngrok does. So it provides you with a URL that tunnels to a port on your local machine. So I already have that downloaded and set up. The link for it is in the repo. It's a completely open source, free piece of software. Speaking of the repo, I actually have it cloned down to my machine right here. You can see we're in a sublime window have the repo open and that should be all you need to uh, to do for yourself. I actually also have my environment set up so all of the packages installed, there's only a couple. So we're back here in the Telnix mission control portal and the first thing that we need is an API key. So let's jump over to API keys here. Let's create a key for ourselves, hit create, copy this key and just paste it into my notepad here for the time being. Now, the next thing you need to do is fire up ngrok. So let's jump over to the terminal and let's fire up ngrok on HTTP port 8080. That's the port that's specified in the repo itself. You can obviously change that yourself if you so desire. And what that does is provide you with a series of forwarding URLs. So let's just grab the HTTP one for a second and also drop that into our notepad for future reference. So that's all set up and up and running. The next thing we need to do is create a TextML application. So TextML is an XML language that is created by Telnix that allows you to sequentially control calls using a series of verbs and nouns. If you're familiar with Twilio and Twimble, this is the exact same idea. In fact, if you have Twimble code, you can actually port it directly over to Telnix and use it without any changes. Our systems do all of that translation for you. So nice, easy migration. But for now, let's go and create a TextML application of our own. So that lies under call control here. Let's hit TextML applications and let's go ahead and add a new TextML app and let's call it call center local demo. Now for the voice method we want get and for the URL we need to grab our ngrok URL, paste that here and then we actually append TextML and inbound to this URL. Now the status callback method, that should be post. Again, we need our ngrok URL, and to this one, we append textml slash events. And that should be all that we need to configure in our textml app. Now the next thing that we need is a phone number. This will be the, the number that your customers actually dial to reach your call center. So this can be anything that you want it to be. For example, if you wanted to search for something like a vanity toll-free number that would be appealing and memorable to your customers, you can do that with Telnix number search. If you can imagine, for example, if you have an API based company and you want to set up a call center for it, well then maybe you'd like the phrase API to be in your vanity toll-free number. So let's, uh, let's search for that. Yeah, and sure enough, I think it's 274 is the dial pad equivalent of API and you can see various toll free numbers that contain 274 here so you can use any one of those. Um, for the minute I don't really care too much about vanity toll free numbers for the sake of this demo so I'm just going to search for any old number in the US. And here we can see some lovely 606 numbers in Whitesburg, Kentucky. I don't know why that shows up first, but it does. So shout out Whitesburg. We're gonna grab a number from there. So that's been added to our cart. Let's jump over to the cart. And while we're here at checkout, we can actually assign this number to this call center local demo TextML application that we just created. It'll be the first one in this dropdown list. So let's assign that and place the order. 
There we go, perfect. So we have that number. And you can see here it is in our numbers inventory and it's associated with the call center local demo app that we just created. So the next thing that you need is to create a credential connection. And this is gonna correspond to you know, a soft phone client or a WebRTC client or, or anything else that you can actually dial. Um, now, I actually already have a credential connection set up on Telnex that's associated with my Zyper soft phone client that I have up here. So I'm going to use that. Uh, if you're creating your own, it's as simple as clicking this add SIP connection button in the top right corner and you'll have access to all of these, uh, these settings that you would normally have that I'm just jumping into right now. First of all, it needs to be a credentials based connection. You can use any username or password that you like. Telnix auto generates some just for ease of use. So I'm just gonna stick with these ones that I already have. And there are a couple of things that we need to configure within this credential connection. The first of which is enabling SIP URI inbound calling. So jump over to inbound, receive SIP URI calls, and you wanna make sure that you, want, you can receive SIP URI calls from anybody. So that allows anyone to dial out to your connection using just this kind of SIP username. So let's just make sure that we've saved those changes. Let's jump back in for one more second because there is one more setting that we need to change, which is the events section. So we need to grab our webhook URL, this ngrok URL that we had here, paste this in here, and we need to append outbound slash event to this URL as well. All right, so let's just do the same thing for the failover, just to round the point home, paste in the ngrok URL, outbound event, and let's save those changes. All right, so that is our soft phone client set up with the connections. Now, the next thing we need to do is create an outbound voice profile. So why outbound voice profile? So what happens when a customer places a call to the, the number that you've associated with your call center is that that interfaces with the TextML application. The TextML application then creates new outbound calls to the connections that you've specified, and then it bridges those two calls together. So you need an outbound voice profile to make outbound calls, and that's part of this application. So let's go and add a new profile for ourselves, and let's just call it call center local outbound, hit create. And then we need to add some connections and applications to this profile. Let's grab the Zyper soft phone connection that I just configured with our ngrok URL, and let's add that to our profile. And there we have it. Now, I think that should be everything that we need in order to use our outbound voice profile. We have allowed the North American destination, so we can dial out to North America, that's all fine and everything there is all good. That is all of the Telnix site configuration that we need to do. So the next thing is to get the app running locally. So let's jump back over to our terminal. And here we are in the call center TextML repo. Let's start it up. Setup.py, and what that does, running setup.py creates this env file here. And it's in this env file that you populate all of your, your information. So the API key, various webhook URLs, and the outbound profile that you just created. So let's grab this API key once more. Let's paste it in here. The ngrok URL, this guy right here. Uh, Slack URL, we're not using a Slack integration, so let's just send those webhooks to the exact same place. There's no real harm in sending them there. And then the outbound profile ID, that's what we just created here. So call center local outbound. This is the profile ID right here. We can copy it and paste it in here. And let's save this env file. All right, and that should be everything that we need to set up on that end. The last thing we need to do is actually run the application itself. So there's a handy command in the repo that we can use for running this application. Um, instead of Python, I'm not using the system Python here, I'm using a separate version of Python 3 that I have installed, which has that alias. So let's just go ahead and run it like that. And sure enough, we are running on port 8080. So that should be everything that we need. And now the next step is to dial the number that we've purchased and associated with the call center application. So we can find that number in our, our numbers section. It's this 606 Kentucky number, you'll recall. So let's go ahead and use my cell phone to dial this number. I'm gonna try and put this on speaker so you can hear the, uh, the IVR through my microphone right here. Hello, you have reached the call center. Please hold while you are connected to the next available agent. And sure enough, you can see here that 
We spent a couple of seconds dialing and now we can see an incoming call on my Zoiper soft phone. So if I answer this call here in Zoiper, you will probably, as expected, we will get a lot of echo. Hello? 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 Yep. Yep. Thank you for calling. Please dial back for more assistance. Right, and so what we did there was we ended the call from the agent side using our Zoiper soft phone, and that played a thank you for calling message from the IVR and then ended the call on the sort of the customer side, I suppose you would call it. Okay, so that was a simple demo of a call center application. I placed an inbound call from my cell phone. It patched through to my Zoiper soft phone client that I have here, right? And that was all done through the Telnex application. The point of a call center really is that you would have more than one client on the receiving end of the call, right? You would have multiple people staffing your call center. As soon as an inbound call comes in from a customer, all of their phones would ring. And then as soon as one of those agents answers, the phones would stop ringing on the other clients. So we're gonna try and emulate that. We're gonna try and add a second client to our call center. And in order to do that, we need to actually add a second SIP connection and we need to associate it with the outbound voice profile that we just created. So as you can see here, the outbound voice profile ID is the only thing that kind of links together your configuration with the Telnix application itself. So just to run that point home and explain that in a bit more depth, if we go to our outbound voice profile here, call center local outbound, the one that we just created, see that there is one connection currently associated with that outbound voice profile and that is indeed my Zoiper soft phone. So if we were to add a second connection to this profile, it would instruct the application to also dial this connection as well as the first one when an inbound call comes in. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. In order to add a second connection, we need something to hook it up to, right? We need a cell phone client or something of that sort. I'm actually going to use WebRTC. So WebRTC is fully supported by Telnix. It's browser-based communications. You can build on it through SDKs in JavaScript and in React Native. And we actually have this demo that you can access through this URL. I'll put this in the video description. And this is just kind of a development playground for WebRTC, basically. You'll see that it takes a SIP username and a password, right? So that corresponds to a connection. So let's go ahead and create another connection for ourselves. So back in the portal, let's add a SIP connection. Let's call it call center WebRTC client. Let's create that. Um, let's just save it first of all, and let's jump back in and let's make sure that first of all, it is a credential connection. Second of all, that it can receive SIP URI calls from anyone. Let's save those. And you'll see that it's auto-generated a username and a password that we can use. And then before we do the final steps, we need to add in the webhook URL. All right, so let's grab this once more paste it here and as always with connections we need to append outbound and events to this webhook URL and let's just paste it back in again as the failover URL and let's save these changes associated with the outbound voice profile as you can see here let's just jump back in and add in this call center webRTC client like we have right here so two connections associated with our outbound voice profile Let's make sure that we have this connection set up in our WebRTC client. So let's grab the username, paste it in here. Let's grab the password, again, paste it in here. Call ID name can be just or in WebRTC just to identify it and call ID number. We can just put anything in here because we won't actually be making outbound calls from this. It's just gonna be taking inbound. So this can be anything we want. And so let's just reconnect here. And sure enough, we are registered. If you're doing this for the first time, the browser will likely ask for permission to use your microphone and your camera if you have one. It's because WebRTC is fully browser-based. It's all from within your browser. So you will need to give it that permission. So that should be everything all set up and ready to go. So let me grab my cell phone once again, go into my recents and redial the call center number that we purchased earlier. And what we should see here, fingers crossed, is both this Zyper soft phone and this WebRTC client so let's give it a go. Hello, you have reached the call center. Please hold while you are connected to the next available agent. And sure enough, we have an incoming call here and we have an incoming call here. So let's do something crazy and try to answer it on the WebRTC site. And we should see this one go away. Uh, we have this going. Yep, the call has ended here and we can hear some echo. Coming through our phone. 
So let's end this call here. Thank you for calling. Please dial back for more assistance. And there we go. So that was two separate clients ringing. One of them was answered, the other one was cancelled, and we were patched through. That's pretty much it. That's a working demo of our call center. Hope you enjoyed the video demo. If you have any questions, or if you'd like to try it out for yourself, feel free to go to telnex.com and create an account. Happy building.